Duncan was out of town this week. So I guess that's all of us. Um, so welcome for those of you um, joining us in the room. If there's an emergency, you can go out either back exit and down either side of the hallway to get out of the building. Are there any changes to the agenda? Michael? Item six. Item six, which is the report. Can we delete the report? No, item six is in Burlington. Okay. No, that's that's eight. Item eight. Where is it now? Sorry. The one about Burlington's comprehensive development. The Burlington stuff, you mean? Yeah. That's yeah, we can that's we, in eight. We don't so other that other business stuff is typically just um as a if we want to bring it up, it's for our information. But yeah, but yeah. I, I wonder, are we expected to have read it? No. <laughs> no, it's it's I think it shouldn't be there. We've got enough on our plate. It's for us to okay, so we we don't need to talk about it. Okay, good. Any other changes to the agenda? I don't know if it's a change, but uh, if we don't get through it tonight, can we consider next Tuesday night as a additional meeting? I think you're getting ahead of yourself, but maybe, okay. yes. <laughs> um, it is true. Um, we aren't going to just kind of continue going off into the night. <laughs> we'll, we'll, Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> And you might know I'm a little I'll be a little grumpy tonight. I have hives right now. And so I'm calling 9 30. I'm leaving. Right. So if at 9 30 we're not done, I think we should figure out what we're gonna do. Sounds like next week. No, I'm gonna say that I think we need to um have another meeting because um, but I think the goal is to get through it tonight and to give staff time to kind of compile our changes. So yeah, so I will I will just make one note there. Um, we have this this plan has to be reviewed by the regional planning commission. Um, they have asked me to get it to, get edits to them by Thursday morning um, to be able to provide in their packet for their next meeting. Um, so this the ideal would be to get through the meeting, get through everything today, and give me direction enough to be able to make those changes in the next sort of day and a bit. Um, understanding that whoop, understanding that that may not be possible, but I would just just wanted to iterate there's there's just there is another reason to try to push for that um, to hopefully finish today if 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 possible. Great. Any open to the public for items not related to the agenda. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. Announcements and staff report. Um, Jen? Yeah, um, I I didn't know when public comment is, and I'm not sure what's on the agenda specifically. Um, so um, just wondering if you could perhaps share the agenda or tell me where to find it. Okay, so um, the goal for tonight um, is not to take public comment. Um, the goal is to review the public comment we've already gotten um, and regarding the comprehensive plan. So if you have something not related to the comprehensive plan, that would be for now. And if it is related to the comprehensive plan, I hope that you've already given us your comments, I think is. Um, well, my comments are related to um, the, the, um zoning and the issues around the airport yeah, okay um well we're not changing the zoning around the airport but we are talking about the comprehensive plan which does touch on that um so uh can i speak at this point then sure yeah, I, I just wanted to share with the council um, some of the concerns that I have regarding uh, the impact of the F-35 basing and urge the council to prioritize housing near the airport due to the harmful 
noise impacts of the F-35. Um, I know that the council has um, shown an interest in protecting children at the Chamberlain School from noise pollution. And there are 110 decibels associated with F-35 flyovers and Dr. Peter Bingham from uh, the University of Vermont, who's a premier neurologist in the state of Vermont, says that the F-35 flyovers decrease reading skills. They increase the risk of mortality due to heart attack. They increase anxiety and depression, attention problems, and aggressive behavior. So uh, those are things I think uh, we would all agree that we don't want to see happen to children. People vary in their sensitivity to noise because of the inherent sensitivity of their brains. Children are among the most susceptible to noise neurotoxicity, according to Dr. Peter Bingham. And um, he says those with the greatest sensitivity pay the highest price along the line cited above, and that soundproofing homes is not enough. Um, I know that uh, we prize science, and um, I think it might be good to do a science lesson uh, with the children at Chamberlain and give them the opportunity and their parents the opportunity to understand the actual impact of the F-35 basing on their children's development. Um, in the long run, we will not have the F-35 basing at the Burlington Airport. And at that point, we're gonna really be glad if we prioritized housing, which is a desperate need in our community. So I wanted to share those remarks. Great. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any announcements? Uh, nope. Sort of covered the only thing that I had, which was that this will be going to the um, the, the PAC. It's called the PAC. It's a group of the Regional um, Planning Commission and Regional Planning Professionals um, on their August 17th meeting. Um, so they have to sort of provide comment to the draft as well, you know, compliance with state statute, things like that. So that's that's the next step um, for this document after this meeting or or potentially two meetings. Um, and then uh, moving forward into August. And just a quick reminder that we are the 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 calendar is tight. The timeline is tight because of the notice requirements amongst the um, different levels of public hearing. So uh, the goal is still to for this for the commission to be able to move this document to public hearing on August 22nd um, to hold the public hearing at the September 26th uh, planning commission meeting. There is an additional week to hold a special meeting in between at the end of September, beginning of October. Um, but there is a there is a firm deadline that the city council needs it in their packet for the October 16th meeting. So if you take an additional week and push it from the 22nd to the 29th in August, you lose that week um, in the end of September, beginning of October to further review anything that comes out of the public hearing. So just making sure everybody's on the same page that we're that's a very tight deadline um, and we you can have you have an extra week to play with, and it's your choice whether it is before it moves to public hearing or um, as an opportunity to review what you hear at the public hearing. Laurie, sure. And then Michael, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, regarding the schedule. Yeah. Which is, um, I think, incredibly tight. I mean, we know it's tight. Yeah. Um, and I know we have to have a plan adopted in February. Yep. The question I have is, is that plan able to go through as a provisional plan? No. Or is there a way to amend the plan once it has been filed? There's a way to amend the There is a way to amend the plan once it has been finalized. Um, it's the same process. So it's a multi-month public outreach um, at the Planning Commission and then again at the City Council process. It's not something to be taken lightly and it's not something that you can just do another little meeting and it's and it's fine. Um, so it's something that we want to avoid doing. The other wrinkle just to be aware of is that, um, so if you move a, move a draft, if the planning commission moves, a, moves the plan to public hearing, 
and then you hear something in the public hearing that you say, oh yeah, we definitely should add that sentence or we should you know, tweak that policy or whatever. The planning commission can, nope, the planning commission can do that without another public hearing. The city council cannot. So that's sort of how the, that's the stop gap on everything. So um, you could change something after the public hearing and still move it to city council, but that's partially why the city council needs to get it as early as they do so that they have the ability to make changes and then warn another public hearing and still have that occur early enough in December and January to, to have it um, in effect by the deadline. So, so just wanted to make that clear that you can make additional changes after the public hearing without needing another month's warning for another sort of do over public hearing. Which I think is something to keep in mind for tonight. You know, I think there there may be things that we want additional public hearing comment on, or we've had a discussion and we heard comment, but maybe we're not ready to make a change. Like we still have another um, whole set of comment getting before we need to make a final decision on things. So, right. Thank well, you. And so it's a related question. So if we can't get what we, what we want to get done tonight, yep. Could we meet again next week? Um, it's possible. The idea would be on the fifteenth. The I, that's it's a possible thing. The ideal is that it doesn't happen because then we're giving the um, regional planning group an incomplete draft, and they would have to be sort of amending their recommendations and amending their sort of approvals of things, and it kind of draws out that whole process. Um, it is something that's possible, but the goal is to not have to do that. So what has the CCRPC seen so far? Because I see quite a lot of things that they've... Yeah, so there's two different bodies. There's a, there's the CCRPC, and then there's the PAC. That's actually not the CCRPC staff. It's um, other planners from Hinesburg and Shelburne and Jericho and other peop other planners, um, sort of the pro professional equivalent of, of myself or Paul. Um who also review and ask questions and provide comment. I'm presenting the this plan to them um, at their August 17th meeting and taking their questions and explaining, you know, well, why is South Burlington doing this or that? So um, it's two different things. The CCRPC staff has seen this draft um, and I've worked with them a bit in the past week or two to make some of these suggested changes. Um, but then there's a whole nother group that, that needs to get it in a packet and see it on the 17th. I asked the question because, I mean, the deadline was August the 2nd, and I don't know how many people um, gave you input by the end of the day on, on August the 2nd. And then we've all listened to mm -hmm. four listening sessions, which has triggered a lot of other things, at least in my mind, that I think we need to talk about and, and include if necessary. Mm -hmm. That adds a lot to the time we're going to use up. Right. I guess what I would say about that is that the the initial draft was also based on extensive public feedback and comment from February, March, April. Like so just because comments were made now doesn't make them more important that comments that the draft was based on, including from our volunteer committees and everything else. But absolutely there are things that public comment has has brought out that people would like to discuss and that's the point of doing that. Um, but just not to necessarily uh, overhaul the whole plan that has been based on significant process up to now based on um, comment that was received at this point. Um, the, only other, the only other quick thing to add is that um, we do have a new communications director on board. Um, he attended at least one of the listening sessions, so you, a few of you have met him. Um, he will be doing a um, copy edit and proofread of the entire document, and he will also be doing the formatting and make it look nicer than a Word document. So that's something that he will be doing um, between in in between now and whenever the public here went between now and and September twenty sixth. Okay, Paul Engels. Yeah, um, I guess I would like to suggest that um, we um, uh, if people have. A uh, specific um, change or addition to the draft that we make it in the form of a motion, get a second, have a discussion, and that we kind of be chap chap about this and see if we can get through as much as we can. You know, if people really have, you know, a burning desire to have some change or some addition to the 
draft, let's do it. But let's not have, uh, you know, just like an open-ended uh, discussion. Let's uh, see if we can just get as much done tonight as we can. I think that's a great suggestion, Paul. Um, so I think we're by now at this point moved into item five, which is the planning commission discussion of the city plan, including all the public comments, committee comments and the edits we've gotten. Um, so I guess first off, thank you to all the community members and committees who have given us comments. Um, we have all read them, um, seen them all compiled and we are not going to be addressing each comment individually. I mean, there's there's hundreds of them. So I think our our goal for tonight is to take what we read and just as Paul just suggested, if if someone feels like there's a change that needs to be made based on what we've read, bring up the change and we can decide, you know, hopefully efficiently if it should be changed or not. I think we want to try to not have any big speeches. Um, and I think another piece to kind of add on to what Kelsey was saying is that I think that um, it's part of our job to make sure that we're being like equitable in our, our decisions too. Um, I think that there's some things in the plan that might not have a champion who made a public comment. So um, you know, I think just in the back of our head, we might see something that's a public comment, but we might also need to be thinking about the voices that weren't able to read the plan and come to a meeting and, and give us comments too. So I think that that's our job too, to be trying to make sure that we're, you know, addressing things equitably, which is hard. So the public input, I mean, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm, I, I think you all received dozens of emails um, on a couple of subjects. Yeah. Um, how are we going to deal with those? Um, well, I have one suggestion. So one of the topics that we got a lot of comment on was the Wheeler Park. So I'd um, send something to staff that's maybe some language that we could put back in. Um, there was many, many comments um, that had kind of a similar gist of four or five paragraphs, kind of descriptive pieces about the Wheeler Nature Park kind of with the concern that we're taking away protections. And, you know, I, th I think one of the general comments to that is that like the whole plan had a lot of streamlining um, where a lot of text and descriptive pieces were, were kind of taken out because the pl plan isn't, we gave staff direction to get rid of um, just descriptive stuff. So the plan's just shorter in general. So, you know, the intention wasn't to like remove any kind of policy um, so I'd ask Kelsey, I don't know if you have that there, just to kind of come up with um, some additional language to add back in. Um, that's not the whole four paragraphs because that's not consistent with the whole formatting of the whole rest of the plan, but it's something for us to see if we feel like it um, addresses. The... Paul here. Um, I think the important thing uh, that we need to address with the Wheeler Park is the um, uh, the future land use map that we make sure that that all that area that's Wheeler, including the seven area seven acres in that corner, that that uh, is all green and that the seven acres are not yellow, uh, which is consistent with the 2016 plan and you know the 2018 work that was done. So. Uh, to me, the land use plan, map is, future land use map is probably the most important aspect of that. Okay, so it sounds like there might be two things. I have a language suggestion, which I think Kelsey's trying to put up. And then it sounds like Paul also has a map suggestion. Um, yep, so I um, am not into the Zoom because we had some login issues, but Nick is. So he's about to share just, just some draft language that I think can help some of this. Um, so it says the city is committed to permanent conservation of the city owned real or nature park property for preservation of the natural communities, recreational opportunities, scenic views and open space provided 
uh, provided to by the park to for the public and will be pursuing that conservation in the near future. Um, that is something that the city council has um, moved on fairly recently in the last six months or so, um, making a commitment to pursue that permanent um, conservation easement. So um, it is not outside city policy to put that language um, back into the plan. Um, and it covers a lot of what um, had been noted in public comments as having been removed um, without kind of putting in all the description back in and, and keeping it keeping the tone consistent with the description of other park areas and other city owned properties um, in the city. Michael? I raised it with the city council last night and uh, I didn't get a commitment as to when this might be done. It's taken 12 years so far. Um, but um, I think uh, there's going to be some attention paid to it. Um, there seems to be only one issue that that requires doing, and that is to get a survey done because the land trust wants to know what it is they're conserving. So um, I will be there every two weeks to remind them. Okay. Well, I guess I make a motion that we put this language in. Okay. And and I have a friendly amendment that we um, keep the area, all the nature, park, all the Wheeler Nature Park area green, that there not be a, a yellow corner of it by Park and Dorset. So um, that has been a point of discussion amongst um, the city management and uh, the agreement that was entered into by the city and um, the new owners of that property, uh, it would be, it is, the settlement that was reached and the agreement that was reached, it would be disingenuous to change the regulations and not the city plan um, when the intention of all parties involved was to allow development of that property. And that's more or less all the details that I know about it. Um, but my understanding is that is it is staff position to um, leave everything green that is owned by the city, all of the Wheeler Nature Park that is owned by the city because there was a land swap that um, resulted in some privately owned land becoming city land that is now shown as green that wasn't before and um, changing the parcel that was swapped for from green to yellow. So having swapped for something, you also swap the land use category. As I understand it, though, it is currently uh, uh, in litigation in the uh, uh, Act 250 uh, court, right? It is in litigation as an appeal from an Act 250 decision, which is not exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, it seems to me that changing it, I mean, it is changing it because it's always been green, um, is um, a concession to the developer. The, the flip side of it is that there is a different piece of piece of land that was not green that now is green. Yeah, same. I was actually I was actually on the. It's same like the ecological value is my understanding. You, I mean, Paul, would you want that to go back to not green? I mean, no, uh, like the swapped no. land. No. Yeah, that that land was a basically golf course, which is NRP, National Resource Protection. So. It's green. It was green before. Okay. Well, I know we changed the zoning based on the the settlement. <laughs> and I mean, there was the settlement. We changed the zoning. It doesn't, I mean, I don't really feel comfortable with your map change that you're talking about, Paul. It seems like green makes sense for what we own, unless we're hearing something different specifically from the, the council. Like this is like a big policy thing that's different than what our settlement says. We're, we're not taking public comment. So my understanding from discussions with our city attorneys is that um, it would, um, 
not be consistent with the intention of the agreements to be changing our regulations um, to allow development and then to not allow development under the city plan. It doesn't, you can't sort of have your cake and eat it too on that. So how, does the, how does the implications of the pending environmental court action play out based on its outcome in terms of how this land is used? Yes, I'm not fully following the question. The, the active 50 permit for this land mm -hmm. is under appeal. Mm -hmm. If the appellants win. Right. What does that do for the city in terms of being able to then in the future change it to green? If the appellants win, you could in the future change it to green. The problem with that is that if the appellants are gonna re are going to win, it needs to stay green as it's always been. I'm, I think this is a city council decision about the land use in this area. I mean, it's we don't typically weigh in on active legal arguments. Well, I, I agree, but there's a corollary to what um, Mr. Smith said, which is, in theory, if we, if we did include the language, then just let the litigation play out. It doesn't do, doesn't do, has nothing to do with us. The, the outcome might have something to do with us because we might have to change something. But if we if we took that language or the essential part of it and put it in the plan and let the litigation play out, no skin off my teeth, doesn't seem to make any difference to us. I understand that, but it's it sounds like what Kelsey was saying is that the city's legal counsel has said that we have a legal obligation to honor the agreement that we made. And I don't know the truth of that or the, the validity of it, but if that's true, we could be opening ourselves up to counter litigation if we did not honor the intent of our agreement. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, I feel like we need to go with what the lawyers for the city are recommending here. And just, just as a reminder for everybody, we have the... Just as a reminder, we have um, the process with the Planning Commission. This this whole document goes to City Council for public hearing and for additional um, work by by City Council. Um, so it's, it, this is not something that it just ends with your decision today. Um, it does end up going to City Council automatically it's for, for their discussion of this whole issue. So could I propose that we um, not adopt Paul's friendly amendment, but that we make a friendly amendment that gets us to make a recommendation to city council to specifically address this issue during their review. I wouldn't put that in the text of the plan that has moved to public hearing, but that is something that we can definitely relay as a message to. Them. Yeah, that's something that something like we, during a we could move presentation, exactly. we can, yep. you can move that whoever does the presentation, if it's me or someone else, make yep. sure. It would only go in our minutes. It wouldn't go in this document. It, it wouldn't go into yeah. the plan document. It would go into, as Jessica said, um, our planning commission chair and the city council chair, you know, communicate about issues like this and Jessica or staff or someone else on the commission would be presenting this to city council. So um, it can be communicated easily um, to city council. Um, it sounds like this is a decision that really we need to defer to them and our legal counsel. It's, I would agree it's a decision that should be made by the party who entered into the agreement, which you know, the buck stops at city council for this. Mr. Lees, this isn't the court. Yeah, we're, this is, we're, this we're is also, my job is, no, my job is, not is to relay, a, is to relay this. <laughs> in the environmental court is going to be completely undercut by doing something this by not having to do. There was an agreement conforming to the agreement was done by the city by changing the regulations. There's nothing in the agreement that requires a change 
to the plan. And in 2018, the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission came 2018, and the, the, the agreement was in 2013, 2018, their plan was exactly the same as ours in that it showed the entire area of the rural park, including the privatized portion in the same color, which is rural. So we, we would totally undercut the litigation because BlackRock would come in and CC, they did change the plan for 2024. And one of our key points is that the 2016 plan, which is the plan under review in this litigation, but it'll be undercut if we change it. So the city will be, will not be in neutral. This is supposed to be a state level review, not another city level activity under, under the act, so, uh, under the criteria. So we should keep things the same as they were, just like the Chittenden County Planning Commission did. Keep everything the same. Let this act of 50 proceed, make a decision. If if it will it'll totally undercut the case if you if you have if you allow housing without first of all without any requirement in the agreement with black with Jamtal. Can we, based on what Mr. Lees is saying, can we consider changing that area to green and alerting city council specifically to this issue and leaving the final decision to city council? So preemptively say we think it should be green, but it's not fully our decision. So we've done this and you have the right to veto it. That would not be staff's recommendation. Yeah, I don't think we should. I would, I would have a problem doing that too. Yeah, I, I think the alternate, I mean, the old plan, the 2016 plan is in force until this plan is adopted, right? So that's not going to happen until sometime in February. Well, January. Just, let, me, let me finish, Mr. Lees. So between now and then, I think you need to take your case, your argument or your request to the city council. And say and say these these <laughs> idiots on the planning commission didn't listen to you. Okay. Please don't take it to the city council. And what I'm hearing is that staff does not recommend that we make that change now, but that we ask the city council to address it specifically and you go and lobby them and hopefully yeah, we need more public hearings uh, Kelsey said that the, the city council can't change it back as easily so they're already prepared to have a second public hearing there's enough time yeah. in December they're, they're already prepared to have a second public hearing well if they no if they they can also give us direction now they can give us direction now you go ask them if you want, okay, so a good idea but... would be to, to not make decisions tonight and get that direction from the city council and then have the plant the next planning commission make this decision. That's not how the process works. The city council is not requested to make recommendations to the planning commission about a document that then goes to city council. So then, so then I think we should just keep it the way things are in 2016. Okay, well, we have, we have a recommendation on, we have a motion. The motion is to add the language on there. No, that and that's, that is, well, you're also not being helpful. You arguing with us makes me like really not want to help you, I must say. <laughs> like, it's just not helpful. Like, we've we've heard all your arguments. We've heard a recommendation from our lawyers, which is not helpful that you dispute what they say. And, you know, we said that we would make a recommendation to the city council that they weigh in additionally. Do we have commissioner comment on the motion? Was there a second? You was, seconded it. I did. You seconded it. Paul's I friendly amendment that... was not seconded. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Okay, um, all in favor of the change? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Paul, you're on mute. 
Sorry, um, I'm opposed. Okay. Okay, so other changes people want to make? Us. Yes, commissioners. This is commissioner discussion. Um, I had a comment and a question on page 16, which is under. Can't hear you, Michael. Is your mic on? Beg your pardon. I had I had a comment and a question on page sixteen of this uh, document, um, which says which which gives us a ten year uh, affordable housing target, which is a um, thousand new affordable homes by twenty thirty five, and an unknown number of market rate houses. Who knows? But a thousand will add about fifteen hundred children to our schools, which would increase it from 2983, which is the current forecast, to 4,100 plus the children that will come from new market rate housing. How are we going to, how are we going to deal with that from a, a, a tax planning point of view? How, how can we plan for the city to uh, pay for the additional services that are required for the school district to double or treble the size of the school compared to what, where they are now. We don't have anything in the plan that helps us, that helps the city anyway, plan for, you know, manage the taxes to fund the education and the services for that hugely increased population, not only school children, but particularly school children, because, um, that's where we have a crisis and that's where we really should focus our attention. So can I just make two factual yeah. clarifications? Um, one is we have had a historical average of about 140 to 150 units per year um, for the last 30, 40 years. Um, recently, we've, we're edging up around closer to 200. Um, so that's just sort of natural market growth. Um, our inclusionary requirements are requiring more of those to be capital A, what we call capital A affordable. So affordable to 80% of um, someone earning 80% of AMI. Um, so in a 10 year, approximately 10 year time span, we're already talking about 2000 units um, being added just total. Um, if if trends continue and they will fluctuate and there's always cycles to these things. Um, so it's not like we're not having any, um, we're not, we were previously planning for zero housing and now we're adding a thousand. Um, we have been planning for somewhere between 1500 and, and 2000 total units anyway. Um, 2035. Approximately, yeah. Um, for the next 10 years or so. Um, 2035 will be another sort of 400 above that, so closer to um, 2,500. Um, that's already planned for as unit growth, and it's our historical pattern in South Burlington. Um, the other thing, so so the thousand seems less abrupt when you think in. It's still a lot of the additional growth, but it's not sort of from zero to a thousand. It's a thousand of about 2,500. Um, the the other thing is that um, we've in particular phrased this to be um, two things. One, affordable, including um, capital A affordable, but also affordable to middle income families. So between 80 and 120% of AMI, um, which is somewhere in the, um, goes up to about 110, $120,000 um, annual income. So it's a, it's a good chunk of our, our sort of middle income um, housing needs. Um, but also it is not necessarily saying that all of those thousand have to be brand new units. Um, so things like uh, CHT conversion of existing condos to affordable units would also count as part of that thousand. Um, so I guess I just wanted to be totally clear that the thousand, the goal of a thousand is not is not saying a thousand new construction affordable for those under 80% um, of AMI. It's much broader than that. And it's um, there's a lot of work being done around the city, uh, conversion of, of hotels into one bedroom apartments, conversion of existing two and three bedroom con condominium complexes into affordable housing complexes. Um, so it's not necessarily brand new construction of um, sort of lower income affordable housing. 
it does say new, that, but nevertheless, new, there are a few. Yeah, the, the, so the, the word new is probably. I got, I got it. I got it. Newly affordable is what it's intended to be. Change? Well, no, I, I have a concern that, that uh, we, we not only the planning commission, but we are the planners, um, need to, because there's going to be a lot of in, inward migration here as well, from places where people cannot or don't want to live anymore, because it's too hot or too wet, or they got washed away, or who knows. Um, and you, you, we've already seen that housing has ticked up now from 140 to about 200 a year, I think you said, and it's it's may tick up more. But we don't have a plan of how to deal with that. What what is the? I guess you could call it uh, the limits to our carrying capacity. What is the carrying capacity of of South Burlington? How many people can we bring in here without degrading the quality of life of the 20, 30,000 people who are here already? Um, they will hold us responsible for for that, and we don't um, we don't have anything here. It's uh, it's a subject I've been I've asked the city council to consider to think about carrying capacity and what we're going to do about it. Um, and I think they will eventually, but I didn't get any feedback. That was last September. Um, it's something that we, as a, the planning commission, should start to think about and maybe try to put something in this some language in this plan that tells the community that we are really thinking about it. I don't know what that language is because- Do you, do you think it's something under the people and population? Like right now there's a, an action, population action, monitor the rate of population growth, changing demographics and land use development for consideration in allocation of city resources and improving public outreach. It seems close to what you're saying, but it's not quite yeah, there. Well, it's, it's tracking, but it's not planning what to do with whatever it is we find in that tracking. Um, it's a very difficult subject. I've grappled with it a lot personally to try and think my way through it. Um, there are all kinds of other uh, issues that that play into it. There's um, economic equilibrium, there's gro no growth, there's degrowth, uh, all kinds of things that, that one has to think about when you think about carrying capacity. But for me, I guess at, the, at ground level, at a, at a city level, it boils down to quality of life. Can we maintain the quality of life if we increase our population? Let's just, for argument's sake, from 20,000 to 40,000. How are we going to do that? And what what will the uh, well, it's not going to affect me, yeah. but the generation that follows me and the next generation after them, yes. And they, uh, we need to think about them. It's a it's an intractable problem, but not something we can solve. But I think we need to acknowledge that we need to plan for it. Okay. So, do you think a more specific action under the people and population? to determine the carrying capacity of South Burlington and determine an understanding of how to um, maintain the quality of life, you know, something like that, just that. One thing that I think could be added to that is um, either in the very first paragraph or where you're writing it down now, adding to it, um, putting an emphasis on maintaining quality of life. Yeah. Because we don't have that in here. And I think that yeah. an emphasis on quality of life is yeah, I, maintaining I, or improving quality of life. I agree that the quality of life issue should should be emphasized. Um, although some of what I'm hearing from Michael sounds a bit like restrictive zoning too. You know, and I think we want to be careful, you know, not to say, well, you know, we don't want, you know, we still want to be able to maintain one unit per acre in certain parts of the city, which I consider restrictive zoning. Um, you know, we can say we want to maintain our natural resources, and that's fine. But I think that creating higher density opportunities for more affordable housing doesn't necessarily take away quality of life. You know, it just you just have to do it properly. Absolutely, and and S one hundred requires that we do that. Right. So there's so, no more. There's so no more. That's, one that's already in the 
Yeah, state law now. Don't know. There's no more one no, unit I, per acre anymore. Well, I understand that, but I've I was just you, I was just looking. I was looking at our current zoning, and it's definitely still in it's, there. It's not restrictive zoning. It's planning. I, it's you know, restrictive zoning. Right. What is it? So um, what, what we've had has been restrictive zoning. We're modifying. Um, okay. There <laughs> are. Two, 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 my two, last two, word two. on it is that there are towns and cities around the United States that have a cap, an annual cap. We can't build more than. X number of houses per year. Uh, that's one of the ways in which they manage. Okay, here, let me try to do a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that in the people and population section, we add a sentence in the initial part to address um, quality of life, the need to maintain quality of life. And then under the population actions, we add an action to study the carrying capacity of our city um, to maintain quality of life. So, okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes. I look like Paul, I think Aye that- Aye from me. Aye, perfect. Okay, unanimous. Okay, next, so, next issue. I have one more thing under people and population. I'm not sure if it's the right place to put it or not, but I think that we need to somewhere at a discussion of dog populations and their needs, presence, and impacts, which came up in our public hearing and or input. And dogs are in 40% of the households in our city. A lot of them don't have places to go. And we really don't talk about it in the plan. And I think somewhere the dog population is a population. It could go in here unless staff has another place that they think is appropriate. But I think that we need to make some reference to what is becoming a growing population in our city, not just dogs, but but dogs and cats, domestic it, animals. It's also a critical part of the well-being of people who live here, who have certainly those who have dogs and dogs and cats. So I'm not sure how to make that a motion or if it's just something that you can be directed to deal with if everybody agrees with it. Yeah, I guess it could go it could go into a few places and it could also be like in a few places, um, if that makes more sense. So something something that was tossed around a bit that didn't make it into drafts of the plan was um there are environmental concerns with stormwater runoff, et cetera, with pet waste, um, the show environment at a section, at a sentence, um, community history and culture, acknowledging this into in sort of um community building and and the you know something in there um and in recreation um, i think those are great places i okay. do think that somehow we need to talk about looking to as we move forward address the needs of dogs and their presence and their impacts and i would be comfortable if you wanted to do it kelsey to say will you please insert these where you think it is most effective Sure. And did that sound sort of generally like the right places to to the commission, environment, um, community, and recreation? Yeah. And I think okay. just somehow mentioning the needs of the dogs and their owners. Okay. Yeah. yeah and I think Betty Melizia yep. had, Melizia. Some, yep. had some really nice language around yep. that. Yep. So. I've had a few meetings with, with Betty and that's some of, when I said things have been sort of yeah, around and added and taken out, and okay. there's been a lot of flux. Is that enough, or do we need a more official motion? That's okay. fine. With it me. sounded like a lot of head nodding. Good. Okay. okay, next item. Um, I'll skip that one. There was a discussion in one of our meetings about at-large versus district representation under under politics. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that goes in here at all. Not, no, that's the purview of the charter committee. There was one about religion, and I actually can't remember which section it was in. It was one of Penny Tompkins' comments that where we we re reference only two particular religious institutions, and it uh, feels like that should be something that I should be. I have proposed language for that. Oh, you have some? Okay, you want to go ahead? Okay, sounds like Michael has a proposal. So if I can just explain why only two. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Um, so originally that was written with two um, particular religious institutions being called out. Um, so the sentence is some of our religious it's communities institute and institutions like the Islamic Society of Vermont and Temple Sinai draw people from our surrounding region and create a strong network based on religious faith. That um, those two were particularly identified because they have a more regional draw um, in particular because there are not sort of repeating facilities or repeating um, faith communities in other um, nearby towns. So that's just an explanation of why those two were called out in particular, um, because they are drawing from from sort of Chittenden, greater Chittenden County and beyond um, to their religious community, just because it's not as prevalent as, you know, every Vermont village having a, a Christian church of some variety. But okay. open so, to just quick explanation. Yeah. Um, so I had a, a, a a question that we should consider then and that is does religious does religion and religious faith have a place in this plan my faith is a very private and personal matter and i don't want it discussed here not it shouldn't be part of a comprehensive plan so um and those two i just said it's inappropriate for to single those particular um two institutions out i happen to know them extremely well because they are contiguous both contiguous with the property i live on and so i have neighbors who attend both of them um so i would rather see that the language we have in there is cultural organizations in south burlington include places of worship service organizations and community groups groups which draw people from our surrounding area collaboration with these organizations and communities can build community and connect us to the region and it's neutral so i'd make a motion that we adopt that language instead of that michael is it effectively just cutting that sentence that i read um it was keeping most of it it was just cutting out just the middle section of it uh, it had the first sentence of the paragraph and the third sentence of the paragraph, but I think that the second page. was mostly removed. Let me just remove that. Yeah. Yeah. Just remove it. I can, I can send it to you. Um, yeah, he added the draw people from. Oh, okay. That's right. Got put into the first sentence. I would second his language. Okay. So to what I'm understanding is now they would read cultural organizations include places of worship, service organizations, and community groups for both South Burlington residents and region. I still have regional visitors, but I don't think Michael had that comma draw people from our surrounding region, or maybe and draw people from their surrounding region. And connect us to the region that which is what you had. I mean, it's just the mm -hmm. first part of that sentence. The whole sentence is shorter. And I'll read it again. Um, mm -hmm. Cultural organizations in South Burlington include places of worship, service organizations, and community groups which draw people from our surrounding area. Collaboration with these organizations and communities can build community and connect us to the region. And leave it at that. And so removing the last sentence to the city needs to seek community partnerships. I'll find it. I think that's a good sentence. Okay, maybe leaving that sentence. So, okay. Um, so we had a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Okay, on favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Okay. So, anything? Well, there was there was one issue. One issue that I, I, I did send to Kelsey, um, I don't know that it's gotten any attention, um, but really had to do mostly with housing, but it's a, it's also an energy issue. And I mean, I've, I've been um, just talking with planning and zoning and trying to determine how the city helps enforce and not enforce, but how, how they help um, uh, ensure that uh, single and two family homes are meeting the RB's energy code. And um, I just wanted to add some language uh, that, you know, ensures that the city does something to ensure that homes that are being built are meeting the RB standard. Currently, um, uh, 
um, planning and zoning does uh, they do hand out the requirements to the builder at the point when the project gets its zoning um, makes its um, requ requests uh, uh, zoning. Um, so each each individual home does not get a building permit. Um, the the whole development gets a gets a permit. So there's actually no tracking of which houses are being built, which ones are being brought online or, or anything. So there's actually no way to ensure that any house um, A uh, meets the requirements of the stretch code, the RB stretch code, and B, we have, there's no way to ensure that homes aren't using fossil fuel heating. We just, we have no mechanism for doing that in the city. And so I think I, I had added some simple language that just made sure that the intent that South Burlington would create a methodology for ensuring that this these things happen because it's really important to our our climate goals. I thought uh, we, that more new houses aren't being built that don't meet the energy standards. I thought we added um, a part under housing about um, getting a permitting and inspection program in place for housing. Is Did it in we, there? I believe we added. Because I, I I was reading. It's in there. It's something to be. Find it. It's in there. It's not specifically about the energy code. It is um, sort of things to be considering as we move forward. Um, my understanding is that this is something that is edging into implementation and sort of um, city council level um, operations. That is not necessarily like we have all of our goals about meeting about meeting energy and about keeping. It would be nice if it was specific to new construction and single and two family homes, because those are currently not dealt with at the state level. Everything else is dealt with at the state level, and these right. two don't. They aren't. And as a matter of fact, I mean, when I talked with one of the builders uh, doing homes, I sort of played, um, you know, played home buyer and called called their office and said, can you please send me a copy of what your your specs and how you meet the current residential building code? And what they sent me was very sketchy. And it, you know, it didn't really address most of the code issues. And when I asked them, it's like, well, do you do you meet the current residential energy standards? They're like, well, you know, we don't have to meet the current standards because this um, this this project was permitted prior to 2020. Um, so you know, so we're meeting like the 2016 standard. And I just thought, is that legal? And they said, oh yes, yes, and it is. So there's houses being built right now that, but they it would still be legal if they go online now. It would be. They are subject to the standards at the time they are permitted, and well, the the nature of these long these long developments that take several years to build the last phase, maybe being built four or five years, even ten years after the whole thing is permitted. It's just the nature of the thing. So the nature of the construction that's allowed from a from the residential energy standard from ten years ago. I mean, we could be talking a 20, 30 percent difference in energy use um, for a home. And it just seems to me that we need to address that. And if it needs to be, you know, and I don't care how it gets addressed. I'm not saying how it's implemented. I'm just saying that we shouldn't be allowing homes to be built that don't meet the current 2020 energy standard. Should we um, put Is that there... in there? I mean, I found your language. Did you? Well, maybe Donna, did you have some language? That... I, I did, what but I don't have it with me right so here. So I found it. So under housing actions, you it's it's in our comment packet oh, here. It okay. says um, coordinate zoning and fire safety permitting and compliance processes to ensure that every new building completed complies with Vermont's residential building energy standards in effect at the time they be begin construction. Can we? I would not be comfortable putting that in without um, putting it by the city attorney, um, but I am happy to do that tomorrow. Okay. Not, I'm not necessarily saying she'll she'll have or he'll have time to. Either one of them will have time to look at it tomorrow, but I can um, talk to them about it as soon and as we can. Could we, as an alternative, if we get negative feedback from them, 
reword it to say work towards, you know, have it be like a, a goal where working I mean, towards. it's it's one of the easier things to accomplish in terms of, you know, climate change mitigation. And so it it is a real shame. I mean, people keep kicking it down the road um, and, and assuming that there's not a lot of construction going on. That's what the state's been doing, you know, because the okay. state doesn't want to deal with this. And so, they say, well, the local- Can I make, a, local motion? Can I make a motion on it? Mm -hmm. I'd like to move that um, we adopt Donna's wording provided we get the okay from, from the city attorney. Exactly. You beat me to the draw. And if we're not able to get the approval of the city attorney that we put it in as aspirational. The 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 sticking, uh, just to be clear, I think the sticking point with the attorney is the compliance with the regulations at the time of construction. Um, when something is permitted under a set of rules, that's the rules that you get. You're not then subject to um, future rules. There's a whole, there's a whole legal world about this. Um, so that's the sticking point is the application of current rules. Um, it is not anything that Don has been suggesting about um, inspection or, you know, additional funding for um, fire marshal or anything like that. That I don't think there's, there's a problem. It's the sort of timing of the regulations. But I fully agree with Donna that if there's any way that we can get it at the time that a building is under construction, that that's really important that's already any any building permitted after february the 15th 20 2023 i think has to comply oh no earlier than that but kelsey's well, saying that if a whole subdivision was permitted that the houses are being built under that permit right. which means that they're being built under the old rules being built under the, the, yes. how, how long well, does a permit apply for a development before it has to be renewed it depends on how much construction work has been happening. So if you're sort of making good faith efforts and continuing your construction, it can be a very long time. But it seems like there so could, it be... could be 15 years. Um, it would be hard to sustain the level of construction required for 15 years. So I think that's probably too long, so but two or three years, probably. Kelsey, do you think that like, you know, what Larry said was there could be an aspirational goal to like, work towards a process that would have that happen in the future like could the work the work towards the process to have um in further in, like inspections and compliance standards and um having to have it be part of issuing a getting a building like having building permits apply all of that i it's I don't think there's an it's it's kind of a black or white yes or no whether you can apply later regulations to something that has a permit um, well, maybe we could have like the permit expire sooner or something. something. Like That's I feel like there's something that could be done to like. And we could. I can. I'll talk to the city attorney. Tell builders to abide by the new rules, even though it's not legally binding. We could be urging, compelling, whatever the right word is, to say this is what we need to do. And if a builder refuses, we can't do anything about it, but at least we can try. I mean, honestly, incentivizing is a lot better than trying to sort of bring Let's the hammer down. Let's talk about how to incentivize yep. it then. I just have a question. Um, so when uh, say a subdivision and, and the developer uh, brings it, they need to make an amendment to the original plan mm -hmm. uh, because something changed. Mm -hmm. Does, it, would that bring forward the it, zoning from that point? Forward? It depends on the scale of the of the amendment. Little things, little tweaks here and there, probably not. But big changes, there's there's a line somewhere, and it's a very fact specific okay. situation. It's not necessarily any change, like you moved the sidewalk by a foot. No, right. Um, right. But if you rerouted the the road and now it infringes on it, it it you know goes closer to a wetland or something you're starting to get closer. So it's a really fact specific thing. Um, but that's always true. If if someone comes in for a major amendment, um, sort of one of these big scale amendments, they're they're subject to new a new set of rules. Or have, wouldn't it be possible too that when the original zoning permit is um is achieved, that you know, there's a statement in writing that, well, if the Arby's energy code is updated, 
um, during during the process of construction that the houses will be required. Those started at a certain date will be required to meet the requirements of the new. That's the legal question. Let's, yeah. okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, passed. Aye. But it, it isn't anything that, this is regulation. This is right. not. Okay, we did it. Right. Next but, issue. I mean, I wanted to say that we have a mixed bag. We have uh, O'Brien Brothers, for instance, they're not, they're, <clears throat> they filed their thing before. Michael, we did it. There's something else. Keep going. It's some of it is voluntary. They're building no 155. Speeches. <laughs> no speeches. So, since we're under, I'll oh, go ahead. Okay, right. Fran, you should go. <laughs> so there was a, there was a comment about the 51% that's on page uh, 34. And that kind of the confusion over um, at a landscape scale, approximately 51% of South Burlington uh, is targeted, well, we is now targeted for conserved. And then under the goals, we protect 51% of the city. I I tried to work on that a little bit to get the 251s out of there. <laughs> and I, I I sent something to Kelsey, but it was way late this afternoon. So it, basically what I did was I I took out in the first sentence the 51% and I left the rest of it in. So I said that at a landscape scale, approximately 41% of South Burlington is considered built and continued on with the remaining 8% mix of unrestricted and then continue with the, most of the rest of the wording. It's the same language, it's the same numbers, but it doesn't put 51% in twice. Okay, that and seems I, like a so. Fran, is that just cutting that first sentence in the second paragraph, effectively? Yes, okay, that's pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then I I made a few tweaks to some other sentences that make it all quite make sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that was all in the, what I said. Maybe you can mm -hmm. read through it and see if it works. But I, I just to try to get rid of the confusion about the fifty-one percent being being there as a, mm -hmm. a twice. Okay, is that everybody okay with that change? Yeah. Okay. Lots of head nodding. I think that's a go. Paul, do you have anything? Um, yes. I uh Michael, did you print that stuff out? No, I got about uh um so I'm passing out okay. Michael handed me a folder and so it's going heading down the line. From the Chamberlain neighborhood. I don't know. Uh, if there's it, a folder. It, is that the Chamberlain neighborhood stuff? Oh no, I got the wheel in Nature Park one. So, two are there two things in the folder, Paul? Yeah, they're yeah. I think one is Wheeler and one is uh, one is um, uh, Chamberlain. Here, this is the airport. You can quickly read through it, but essentially, what it is is uh, adding. Uh, to page 23, um, uh, language from the uh, uh, from the uh, airport rezoning task force that would help beef that uh, section up uh, on behalf of the neighborhood. Are there extra questions? Can I grab one? Uh, yeah. Do you have more, Michael? Michael has them. Okay. 
have some of this in um Paul, is this mostly from that um packet. that task force? Um the from, uh, sorry from, from the rezoning task force report. Yeah, that language is from the task force report. Yeah. Where did we have um there was in the north, oh yeah, here. Northwest. So I'm just looking at what we have in the, so we have some goals for the Northwest area. Yeah, I think page 82 to 84. Yeah, yeah 82 to 84. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's under your point to make sure that um, if we add language, it doesn't conflict with what's on 82 and 84. I like what's on 82, where it says create transitions from Burlington International Airport and areas identified for redevelopment that serve or buffer nearby neighborhoods, establish a community vision for the future of this area. I, I think that that's like a really important, the establishment of the vision, I think is really important, Paul. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm opposed to what you're suggesting here. I just wanna make sure whatever we write um, allows for that establishment of the community vision. Cause you know, you were very involved with the airport task force and it was very focused on like a particular issue in like a particular right. part there. And, you know, I think that the whole area is much kind of broader than what was addressed by the task force. So I wouldn't want to like well, miss is... out on kind of that future visioning um, and be stuck with maybe something that was kind of more narrowly focused. So yeah. Um, but you probably know better. Well, there was the 2020, 2016 um, report also that uh, um, that outlined a lot of the vision for the neighborhood kinds of issues. So I actually asked the people in the neighborhood to write a motion. You know, I said, write a motion, I'll make the motion. You know, so this, this is what, this is the, the will of the neighborhood, if you will. It would would this go um, after the uh, one, two, three, fourth paragraph on page 23 means at the end of Burlington International Airport, that section? Is that where you would want this to yeah. go? I hadn't really given any thought to where it would go. Uh, well, on page 23. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a twenty three section. Yeah. So just as a point, page twenty three is in the economy section. Um, I'm not sure that's where some of this language fits best. Um, yeah, there, there's a discussion of the of the zoning uh, issue somewhere else in this plan. I'm not quite sure where it is I, oh it's 83 it's it says interface with the airport and then there's page is on page 83 and 84 there's yeah. actually many pages here that actually kind of yeah there's three or four pages there that uh, uh that are i think that's the northwest section right yes yeah Um, I I seem to remember some language about it was that it was zoned R four at this time somewhere in here. And I, I mean, it says the recommended the task force made a series of findings recommended the planning commission not rezone the area at this time and offer the following step to the planning commission and that's what Jessica was pointing out that that following step is one of the. Um, one of the 
four or five recommendations from the report saying further community driven planning for all the land in the city of South Burlington owned by the city of Burlington as part of related to or in proximity to well it says BIA but that's you know BTV um, or LBIA now um, is needed along with updates and revisions to the South Burlington comprehensive plan to incorporate the recommendations of the Chamberlain neighborhood land use and transportation plan and subsequent work. So maybe that's where this should go. Is there any uh, language in Paul's document that anybody has a problem with? Well, we got to fix the pages because. Well, I was going to say that if, I don't have a problem with. If it. there's no problem with Whatever, the language yeah. that's in this document, um, Paul, would you be comfortable with staff finding the appropriate place to make sure that these this language gets incorporated into the document? Well, sure, and I mean that's part of the uh, part of the motion is to have Kelsey. Uh, yeah. Uh, make sure that it doesn't conflict with anything either, you know, so. So just two things that I wanted to just bring up. Um, I'm not saying you can't do that, but things I wanted to bring up. One is the rezoning task force, as Jessica pointed out, was um, advertised and focused on a specific request by the airport. It wasn't presented as a community-driven planning process for a larger area or for all of the noise lands. Um, so while there are statements that are much, that are broader, that are in the report, um, our intention was to take the recommendations of the Air Force, uh, of the task force and build on them with a much more robust and much longer term um, planning process that involved um, public meetings and public outreach and equity um, considerations and as Jessica said, visioning for the area, for the whole area, um, and a much bigger process um, that involved a lot more people and was advertised a lot. Um, as a much broader situation but, and reflective of the truth of, of the sort of broadness of, of that interface um, and really giving the issue all of the airspace and all of the community, um, excuse me, um, community resources that it's due. Uh, and I wouldn't want to circumvent that entire process by including the recommendations from an, um, a more narrow task force. Does this well, conflict with that? Really, this I don't know that it's an doesn't issue. doesn't preclude. Uh, I think you're, this long-term project is essential and valuable, but this doesn't preclude us from doing that. This is like a, a placeholder for what that long-term plan will be. I guess I'm just pointing out that I think there are statements that are made in here and that are made in some of the comments provided by the public, which are direct quotes from the report um, that do make um do do undercut that process um can you identify the ones in this document that do that well i can i mean i guess i would say may, maybe even just the first one um you know the the task force was very um focused on like a particular spot mm -hmm. and you know preventing any further expansion of the airport, commercial industrial towards the Chamberlain neighborhood is the most certain regulatory action. Um, the city can take at this time to avoid future airport related impacts to quality of life in the neighborhood. And that I think makes a, a lot of sense, like, and it's very specific to like the spot they were talking about, mm -hmm. but there could potentially be like some other location in that whole giant zone where could be appropriate. I, I don't know. They just weren't looking across the whole. Can this be added so that it's specific to this area? Maybe. Well, I mean, if it's clear that it's like about the zoning, specific zoning request, just so it's not out of context, mm -hmm. maybe. You know, I asked them, oh. you, you tell me, uh, and their response was, we really can't come up with any better language than the language that was in the rezoning task force. So it's not, you know, it's not the, re the issue is not the rezoning task force. The issue is the language. I mean, they could have made up some language, I suppose, but it, it, the yeah. response was, you know, we really can't nail it any better than it was nailed in the, in the rezoning task force in these sections. So, um, you know, that's the reason for the language because that expresses how they feel and what they want. To me, the essence of it was um, 
just made ours you know, a commitment from the city to never rezone from R4, you know, that, you know, the, R, R4 now and forever, you know, and, you know, maybe in the distant future or, you know, who knows what future, uh, it's possible that re homes could be rebuilt there. You know, in the meantime, there can be parks, there can be, you know, lots of things that happen in that neighborhood. And it's for all the neighborhood. It's not not restricted to those 11 acres. I think those comments were from the introductory pages of the uh, of the task force report, if I if I recall. I guess that just makes my point um, about this is that I don't think we want to restrict it necessarily to our four. I don't know why if if the community wants affordable housing in that area, why it can't be R8 or R10. So um well people don't have a sophisticated understanding of that's what I guess that's my they, that's my point about this specific language is that as it is so specific um that it does do things like commit to R4 um and commit to zoning districts and and things like that that are not necessarily reflective of a more um flexible vision for the area that that could be um could be better than it used to be even yeah i guess that's my point is that hope, we're we're the city is prepared and we were even talking today about grant opportunities to hire outside consultants and provide further funding and further staff time towards um really doing robust community outreach and um uh work on this to really sort of develop what that future should look like in the area um, and committing to exactly this language. Um, it honestly, to me, it's, it, and this is just me, I'm just, I'm staff, it's up to the commission, but it feels that there's some of, some of it, not all of it, but some of it can be a little bit restrictive and short-sighted because it's, it's focusing on replacing what was there before with the same thing. And that's not necessarily what the vision of that area should should be. Or Can we be. remove the references to R4, at least at the bottom there by where we say retaining the R4 zoning district by say retaining residential uh, zoning for this district? And that will mean we can do any kind of residential development. But I don't know if that's true either. Like, I don't know if it, if mixed mixed use is something else that is wanted in that area or something like these are all questions that haven't been sort of asked and answered um they were answered absolutely they were answered in the context of the rezoning request um that was made in a specific point in time for a specific 10-ish acres of land well, let's give, give us some language that the ability you could say residential mixed use you know, we can pick one of those well, I think we have the language. The language says further community-driven planning for all the land um, is needed. Like, like it leaves it. Okay, I'm. I just have a hard time uh, ignoring the input we, that we got. I don't know how- Oh, much. I'm not saying ignoring. I'm saying that the language that's well, we, pulled from another document is, is too specific to the purposes of that document. We can take a lot, you can, you can take the intentions and the, the visioning statements and integrate it into what we've written about a community visioning process um, and sort of put some brackets on that community visioning process. That's absolutely the case. I am not, rec as my staff opinion would be to not take- the verbatim language from the previous task force report and put it into the comp plan because the context is different. I'm not saying that we can't include the sentiment. Would you be willing to take the intention behind this yeah. and incorporate that into the plan in the appropriate locations? Yeah. yeah. It's oh, but that well, why don't we, you? Why don't we ask Paul to to I mean go back to the the people that he got this from and that and rework it the way Kelsey has described that it's not too specific, but gives a general idea of, of what what they would like to see in for this area without tying the, the hands to tying the hands of, of the commission and the city to specific 
uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other option is these and, are all, and, all of these paragraphs are direct quotes from the task force. And Paul said that the members of the community that he spoke to um, liked like the that. language from the task force. Um, so I'm happy to take this language and do that to it um, and see what, what you all think at the at the next meeting. If that's yeah. acceptable, Paul, would right, you be we comfortable make... giving Kelsey that mandate? Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think that well, was the too was you know also make sure that anything that's done doesn't conflict with other things. You know. So. Yep. Yeah. I move. Uh, I, I move think, that as a motion then. Well, I think Jessica though is also onto some things with this too though. Did I what? I, what to me, it seems like you began. I thought a th thoughtful discussion of of this and you're continuing to read it <laughs> yeah no i i i think i think that it seems good i just want to make sure i guess just to echo that you know i think putting in these sentiments are really good but making sure to leave it open so you know when there's a discussion yeah. of mixed use that's okay or maybe more affordable housing or more more open space like i just wouldn't want us to be like have our hands tied um sure. yeah because yeah, that's and i and think I on the map, we left, we did add the one green strip and then we left the rest white to like make sure we could make those decisions later. Yeah. Uh, and I like what Jessica said too, to take that language and make it universal for the neighborhood rather than specific to that one piece of property. Okay. Michael, okay. will you make a motion then? I was going to make a motion that we ask Kelsey to take what. Paul has presented here and rework it so that we can include something that represents the sentiments that are expressed by the community in, 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 in what they've submitted to us. I'd second that. Okay, any additional discussion on the commission? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Great. Thank you. You're welcome, Paul. Laurie, you have something there? Um, I have three things in, in the housing section um, under housing goals, uh, page 14, and I'm not sure exactly where we would want them to fit in, um, but one would be uh, promote the creation of or uh, use of housing trust for the development of affordable housing. We do have a housing trust and is, fund. Okay. Um, is that what you're sorry I was still well, typing something <laughs> I was saying promoting the creation of a new of it to further create affordable housing so is the trust actively being yes okay so that's there um do I didn't see anything in the housing section about focusing on uh or incentivize uh redevelopment um and identify uh, where appropriate. So quick clarification for me, redevelopment to you, is that like infill development of sort of currently used sites or is it adaptive reuse of current structures? Because they're sort of slightly different. It's both. It, okay. might, it might be turning parking lots into housing. It might yep. be any, there are a number of ways that we can redevelop already developed lands to increase housing density, to increase walkability, et cetera, et cetera, but just really focusing on on redevelopment of parcels of land that are currently being underutilized. And is that in the in the housing section that I you wanted to do? Yeah, but specifically around housing. Okay. Because it there is some discussion of that in the um land use types. There is a little bit in the housing. Um but if you want more, we can. That's along transit serb corridors specifically. Okay. Let's so see. you're talking about more. Yeah. We might just change this one bullet, and um, it says along transit serb corridor, and smaller scale, and and just get rid of the transit serb corridors. So it's the two. So it, it's it's that gets into the other piece that I have, which is around transportation. Well, so that sentence, that bullet, is two things. Mm -hmm. It's larger scale redevelopment and infill along transit serve corridors and smaller scale reinvestment and thoughtful infill in existing neighborhoods. So it's, 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 it's assigning two different scales to infill citywide. Yeah. Does that, is that enough or is that slightly off what you're saying? Um, 
in infill. So, I want to make sure that we're really focusing on redevelopment, redevelopment. not just the big, not just the big parcels. Okay. So redevelopment is big parcels, and then infill is smaller parcels. They're both. I have both. A, uh, there is a section on it which actually I had something to say about, but I'll let you finish. If I if I added um, redevelopment and adaptive reuse. Yes. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yes. And the other piece that I had for housing was. Um, to promote ownership options in multifamily housing. As a goal or as an action? Um, I would think as a goal because, and that was brought up in, in our listening sessions, encouragement of, of ownership really um, increases people's care for where they're living. So I would... I liked you using the word options, um, be like oh, ownership options because yes. Yes. there there's absolutely a need for rentals and rental the rental market and there are people of different lifestyles and of different points in their lives that rentals make more sense. Um, so not fully prioritizing all ownership. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And a mix of owners and renters is a is a healthy can be a healthy mix. Yeah, I think I think there's an advantage too in what you're saying because sometimes the scale of multifamily buildings that are sort of more owner occupied tend to the smaller side of multifamily as opposed to, you know, 60 units, you can start getting into more 4 unit and 6 unit um or even 3, even 2 unit. Yeah. I mean, 2 unit isn't really multifamily, but the whole discussion of privately owned um um, uh, duplex, um, three-story duplex townhouses yep. that, you know, it's like, I've talked to people in the community and said, I would have bought that. If there, if you had that at city center, I would want one. And yet there's no option for that right now. And I, I, I agree with you. There's, there's really a need for, for that. So that one's in. So do we need a motion? I think the do motion. Do we need a motion on that, or did you add? Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to write something quickly for you to motion on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Move on. Um, uh, encourage home ownership options in multifamily buildings alongside robust rental options. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I make a motion for that. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anonymous. Okay, and Michael, you had something in here? Yeah, I had too? something in the section which is headed smart growth, infill housing, and conversions. We had a really good paragraph written there, which is page, page 17. 17. Bottom of page. It says um, a relatively small amount of undeveloped land is available for Available housing needs to be increased, increasingly located in higher density mixed use developments in targeted growth areas like city center and other infrastructure served portions of the community. The city has multiple opportunities to support these trends and each of each goals of thriving mixed use neighborhoods, affordability, da da da, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's been a new addition which reads that. Housing in areas with existing public infrastructure, e.g. roadways, transit, water, and sewer, increases affordability due to lower development and city service costs. That is like a bit, a bit like motherhood and apple pie. We know that. But I worry about it because it's exactly the language that we managed to exclude uh, from S100. And I worry that this is a, could undermine our position there. Somebody in the future, like somebody like Mr. Lees, could come to us and say, well, it says so in the plan that I can build cheaply over there, so I'm going to convert this habitat block that I own. You know, I worry about it, and I wonder why did we have to add it, and I'm going to make a motion that it be removed. It was a recommendation from another department. It's not from me. My my motion stands, I, and, yeah, and for and for the reasons I've just outlined. That is I up to make you. Make a motion that we we remove it because I think it's superfluous in that very very good and comprehensive paragraph that's there. Okay, which sentence? Say it again. Make your motion. 
I make my the, I, I move that the sentence that's been added, which reads housing in areas with existing public infrastructure, e.g. roadways, transit, water, and sewer, increases affordability due to lower development and city service costs be removed. Okay, do you have a second? I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, I'm just wondering, was that an affordable housing uh, addition or who, who no. recommended the addition of that? No, it was um, Alana Blanchard, Community Development Director. Okay, are we, any... I'm, not worried. I'm not worried about the concept. I'm worried about the fact that it opens up something that we tried to uh, no. to resolve. I'd, by... say, I'd say it shows that you know we have common sense. You know, because oh, because I don't I don't think I don't think the S one hundred really changes the need for you know the usefulness of having that language there. You know, yeah, I don't I don't under, I don't agree I don't agree with you on that. Okay, all in favor of removing the sentence. Aye. 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 I'll say aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, it passes, it's, it stays, or it gets removed. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have some items? Lori, I see I you've do. got a bunch of I've notes. got yellow still. Okay. I'm getting them crossed off quickly. Um, I'll go to transportation and... Um, what page? I'm looking at my notes. I'm not looking at the transportation section. Um, one thing that I got out of the listening sessions was what a crucial role transportation is playing in the development of our city, especially the use of cars, the gridlock that we have already on Dorset Street. And transportation is 30% of our carbon emissions. And I think that we need to um i'd like to in the action sections i'd like to move two things up to um goals which is a motion for point-to-point -point transportation networks public transportation networks and um a motion to move bike share up to goals and um a recommendation that bike share be distributed throughout neighborhoods and um that we work towards a way to make them affordable for people that have any issue using them. One thing I became aware of with the with the bird bike system in Queen City Park, if we had five of them parked in our neighborhood and they could be used for anybody in the neighborhood to go make local trips, they could hugely reduce the amount of single occupancy trips made out of our neighborhood. And I think that's true in a number of neighborhoods throughout our city. Um, and I'd like to see those moved up into a, a goal level rather than an action level. So just clarifying the difference between the goals and the actions, the goals are sort of the long-term results that we want to see and the actions are how we get there. So to me, the long, what you were just saying is the long-term results that you want to see is reduction in vehicle miles traveled, right. which is in a goal. And one of the actions on how to get there is having a robust and functioning bike share system. Do I also understand that the goals are uh, the priority and action items that the city council is focusing on? Um, not exactly. So the action items are the action items, okay. um, which sounds facetious, but the actions are the steps to take, like discrete things to do. Um, the goals are really more the the metrics, the the how do we tell that we're, that we're doing a good job? Like, how are we checking in about things? So um, I wouldn't say that actions are necessarily lower than goals. I would say that it's the, it's the things that we want to do that we've thought of uh, at, up to now that we've thought of to meet the measurable goals that we've set. Okay. So that's sort of, that's why those things, while, while very important and, and, um, so it's it's almost a good indication that it's something that the city can do, that it should be in the actions, okay. that the results then are the goals. I'm fine having it stay in the actions then, but I would like to talk about promotion and distribution of yep. the bike system so that it can be used 
as a point to point source. I'm at home. I want to go somewhere. There's a bike there I can pick up and do it with. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm somewhere else, I can pick up a bike and take it back home and leave it there. So can I add to the bullet that says reestablish and expand bike share program and increase usage, something like comma by um, greater distribution greater in the neighborhoods. They, they need to be located in the in the neighborhoods by distribution within neighborhoods yeah. and um, also by um, looking at a way to focus on affordability and accessibility. Because right now they're a buck a minute yeah. No, they're 50 cents a minute and a buck when you take them. So yeah, six... and it's, well, and we've, we've, that's something that we've, we have talked about at the staff level is um, it's, it's, we're sort of at the, the vendor is who is, who is available, is yeah. who we have. Um, the problem with, especially if you're going on sort of an outlying trip is it's not cost effective to pick up a bike, drive to the grocery store, grocery or bike to the grocery store, bike grocery shop for an hour and then bike back because someone may have taken your bike because you, you know, you, you locked it, you know, you checked it back in and then there's no bike available because there isn't one at the grocery store, um, but you're not going to pay, but then you're not, and you're not going to pay for 60 minutes That's right. at the store. So, yeah. um, yeah. Okay. Um, and just equitability or affordability so that whether it's through residential pass rates or something like some way to make it so that it's not just a, a entertainment activity. It's something that people can really do. Um, and this just gets to my overall piece about getting out of cars. Cost, convenience, time, and availability are barriers to getting people out of cars. And if we can make it so that cars are headed, don't function as well, get too expensive, and alternatives are more attractive, we can get people out of cars. The bikes is one way to do it, point to point. Um, public transportation can do the same thing. And connectivity between the neighborhoods for transportation. Um, and where was I? I? I would like to see at the beginning of the transportation section, something about talking about a goal to transform our transportation. That 10 years from now, we have a significantly different looking transportation system than we do now, because without reducing those cars, we're not gonna get our goals. And I'm wondering how that can be put in. Could, could we do something with incorporating a transportation plan? as a goal? Um, I would say transportation is actually one of those topics that is being constantly planned because there's significant federal money to do so. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure that a trans, like a, a single transportation plan makes a lot of sense, but I'm not a transportation planner. So, and that a lot of that happens on our DPW side, like there's a lot of moving parts. Um, it feels to me, this is just my gut, is that when, if you go through a process of making a transportation plan, by the time it's adopted, it will already be it's out of date. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So going kind of piece by piece, do it like the, we're in the process of a bike ped um, plan in this fiscal year, um, working with future things. It feels like it works. Um, I'm looking I'm for an sure. aspirational statement in the beginning of the transportation section that says, <laughs> Transportation, the way we're doing it now, is unsustainable, and we're look, working to find ways to transform our transportation system. We want to be walkable. We want to be bikeable. We want to be connected. And how can we take these transportation dollars and focus on that rather than focusing them on roads and cars? And if we did that, we could far exceed our 2.5% a, a year reduction in in transportation emissions. Um, I just, 10 years from now, I'd like to think that uh, Market Street and Dorset Street are, I'll be exa exaggerating, but uh, Church Street in Burlington, <laughs> you know? Um, and 
that's the only way we're going to really having every car replaced by a by a electric car is not going to fix this greater problem. So if I added a sentence at the end of the first paragraph, which the first paragraph includes things like um, transportation as a top contributor to greenhouse gases, tra mm -hmm. like transitioning to other things, we uh, it was developed as ex almost exclusively around passenger vehicles, all that sort of historical and background kind of language is in there. Um, logically, just looking at it, it feels like the best place for that kind of sentence is at the end of that paragraph. Okay. Um, and I just wrote something quickly. Um, our current transportation system is unsustainable, and we need to continually explore options for how to transform it. I love that, and I'd love to see added to that and focus on transportation-oriented development. So that when we're doing developments, wherever they're happening, we're looking at transportation and how are people going to get from that development to wherever they're going as being the the one of the primary drivers of how that development gets done. It feels like a separate sentence. That'd be great. Okay. <laughs> okay, are, are people okay with his language changes? We have some nodding. Okay. Lori, I was just in uh, Amsterdam in Norway and it was just incredible to behold. Uh, in Amsterdam, all the streets um, have three lanes. There's a center gray lane that's for trams and automobiles, of which there are very few. Uh, and then there's a red lane, lane that's for bicycles, of which there are many, many, many. Uh, and then there's a pedestrian, uh, you know, conventional uh, sidewalk. And we were warned repeatedly to stay out of the bike lane because people would be going through there and and they wouldn't uh, be paying much attention to us. It was really, really incredible. And in Norway, four out of the five cars, four, four out of five cars are electric. And uh, you see, you know, uh, charging uh, stations, maybe 20 charging stations in a row, and they're public facilities. You know, it's, it, the whole thing is like, you know, our dream world beyond what we could imagine. And it's happening every day in probably most of the cities in Europe, you know and countryside too. Well, this topic is one of the places we can make the biggest changes in how we how our city feels. Yeah, I mean, we can so build a just, city this way. Obviously they build Amsterdam that way, you know? Anyway, I can, okay. I, that okay. gets me done for transportation. Okay. I have, um, so Dan Albright had um, an addition to the community gardening um, plots. It's on page 33 to add to the this uh, goal on community gardens that they're distributed locations within walking or biking distance for all city residents with a priority for residents of housing unit types, condos and apartments that do not have access to their own land for gardening. I just thought that was important. Like there are parts of our city where many people have their own land. Um, and then there was another one that I is that in the uh, changing adding language to the end of that. Yeah, goal? just adding the, the language that he had proposed there. And then can you just so, repeat it so I can just write it into this document with a priority for residents of housing unit types, e.g. condos and apartments that do not have access to their own land for gardening. Do we need to make that a motion? Which page was that on? It's on 33. 33 the, of the packet or 33 of the? The document, the original. Um, I, I'll make it a motion. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then. Aye. Similarly, um, you know, I thought this was another one of his good comments on page 51. It's in recreation. Um, we have a goal or an action that says construct a community recreation center. And I liked what he added here that said, or a network of smaller centers that is easily accessible to the majority of the population, especially those in neighborhoods with a high proportion of multi-unit buildings. Yes. Um, so I'll make a motion. Was your yes a second? That was a second. Okay, any discussion on that? Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Yes. 
Can you just read it one more time? Um, construct a community recreation center or a network of smaller centers that is easily accessible to the majority of the population, especially those in neighborhoods with a high proportion of multi-unit buildings. Thanks. Michael, I see you've got a lot of red over there. You have anything you want changed? No, I I had picked on the same community. I mean, uh, community gardens as part of uh, developments. Uh, I made that note, but you've covered it. Okay. Um, Anything else? Paul, you have anything else? I had, or Mike? I had only something on trans and something else on transportation, um, which was to do with um, school children. Well, I'll find it. Is it the goal that was added? Well, we. Yeah, it was a goal or an action um, about trying to get, it was to improve uh, school transportation. Um, and I made a note, uh, in, in improve school transportation and reduce congestion by reaching a level of 60% of children who take the school bus, walk or bike to school. Um, and that's because the, I think the school bus is the most important thing of all if we're going to reduce car travel by school children. So what we don't have in there is the, the disincentive to incentivize them to use the bus uh, and not drive to school. I mean, I, I go past that school almost every day. Um, and there are hundreds of cars there and only a few belong to the staff. And we all pay for a very, very effective school bus service, which is converting to electric buses pretty rapidly. So stating as a goal that we want to improve it is fine, but I think we need to have some kind of incentive or disincentive. I, when we discussed this with the school board in the climate action plan, I suggested that we should make it difficult or very expensive to bring your car to school. So I'm looking for, for a way that we can incentivize this because saying we want to improve the school bus service is not going to get it done. Do you have some language? I don't. Um, I just made that one point that I've added the school bus to, to, the, to walking and biking. Hmm. Well, um, just a comment, um, part of the transportation implementation plan uh, for the climate climate action um, is parking management. Yep. And, you know, it, it, it strikes me that the school is like one of the relative, should be one of the easiest places to incorporate parking management. And, um, you know, that's a big disincentive. If you have a lot fewer spaces, then, you know, prioritize those. Uh, spaces to those who actually require them. Parking lots to playgrounds. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. parking lots to classrooms in yeah, this case. You, you at, know, yeah. there's there's a. Need. You look at Tuttle and the high school. You add those two parking lots together. It's more than double the floor, the, a lot the of, footprint. It's a lot of parking. Of and they want you know they're worrying about building a new school that can expand right there. And zoning requirements for parking, I think, for schools is. A pretty so, easy thing. I don't have the language, but I but if if there's a sentiment here that um, this is something worth doing, I will try to develop that language and send it to Kelsey. So it's the this is put in the transportation section. It was suggested by another member of city staff um, as a transportation related goal, which is what you're saying, but. There's at some point where it tips over into the school's planning process and the school management. Um, so I would just be very, really wary about that um, because the city is not in a position to say the school has to build new classrooms in a certain place or they, has, they have to manage their parents in a certain way. Um, they have to charge you know, cars that come into their parking lot. Like mm -hmm. we're not in a position to require them to do anything like that. Um, so we were writing it, or it was written by another member of staff as a, 
um, as a metric by which you could measure that parents and children feel that their routes to school are safe and effective. So it's not necessarily forcing anybody or even incentivizing anybody. It's more of a metric that is how you would measure that we're doing a good job as a city for the transportation network around the schools. Well, maybe we should be working with the school uh, district to achieve that goal. Right. But Which the, we don't say. The, no, because the point is, it is a, it is a measurable um, indicator of the surrounding network and not necessarily the school property itself, right. if that makes sense sense so it's it's the sidewalks on the neighboring properties it's the intersections at dorset street it's um the school the public bus system it's the you know there's all these other things that the city does control that that would affect this achieving this goal that is not um sort of stepping on what the school is doing um so i guess i'm just i'm just saying there is a line there and i don't know where exactly that line is saying we should work with this with the school district doesn't mean we're going to step on their toes and force them to do something we're going to ask them to help us they were amenable uh to to talking about this when we talked to them uh during the climate action plan uh development you might remember there was one where there were members of the school board there um and they thought it was a good idea they didn't say how they were going to do it, but uh, we we should try and work with them to achieve that sixty percent goal. Otherwise, you won't we won't get there. So, um, to me, that is the that's an action, um, and it's right along line. The one of the last ones was working with the state about something. So, listing another one, working with the school district to achieve um, safe routes to school. That's, I think that's There's that's something unrelated right. that I didn't get a chance to say because Laurie is so long winded. Uh, <laughs> no. Are we competing, Michael? No, no. It was about it was about goals and actions, uh, and uh, I've been working under perhaps the misapprehension, but I thought it was that the goals represent the policy objectives of this plan, and the actions are what we used to call strategies. The goals were objectives, and actions used to be called strategies. Yes, but I'm not sure that I heard that from you today. Because it's changed. <laughs> what? <laughs> We've been calling them goals and actions for a, a month or two at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But but this evening, I don't think you were very clear that the goals are the policy objectives that from which will guide the council. Right. So I am I am in public outreach brain where the you know using words like objectives and policies is can muddy the waters. Um, so I've I have tended to phrase it as these are what we what we want to be happening in 10 years this is what our vision is this is what we want to be looking back and be able to say that we did a good job or we didn't by measuring these things in my like that that is all just a a, a very plain language way of saying these are the policies so you would never say that the goals uh in this plan are designed are, are there to guide policy I think you and I may have different understandings of the word policy and the utility of it in this context. Yeah, yeah. Um, policy is the is what feels like the test. <laughs> let me get, let, let's, let's the finish. Policy is the policy is what the city council wants to achieve, and the actions are. Are, and those are the goals and the actions are how they get there. So the specific, you know, budget allocations or the specific guidance to staff to work on a, a specific a project or working with UVM about whatever, like those are all actions to reach their sort of platforms. So finish the conversation. So if I okay. go to the council in the future and say, that there's a goal in here in the plan yeah. that says X, Oh, and that should be the I want that's the policy that you guys are supposed to follow, right? Yes. And what will they say? Yes. Okay. Satisfied. You've made Thank your you. point. So it's nine o'clock and I want to get to the end of this. So Wait, I, I just want to, to I want to go back to the school transportation thing very briefly. Um, the biggest problem that our neighborhood has is the school traffic from Rice High School. So there is another school besides the school district in the city 
And um, if there's an issue about safety, uh, the traffic is bumper to bumper. There's no traffic light on, on uh, Shelburne Road and uh, Proctor Avenue, which is what all the traffic comes up. Uh, we've got a one-way street to keep them out of uh, the um, Hadley, uh, Hadley and Meadow, uh, Meadow Road area of the city, of the neighborhood. Um, so, um, you know, we could use some help in that regards to find um, an alternative route. There is an alternative route. There could be a, uh, uh, a driveway through the diocesan center off of Joy Drive that would go directly to Rice that would take a lot of the traffic from the south end of uh, Chittenden County uh, and uh, redirect it away from our neighborhood. But uh, it's definitely not safe with no traffic light on Shelburne Road. And it definitely is a problem for the neighborhood uh, during the school year from uh, at eight, you know, eight, 745 in the morning and 215 in the afternoon. Just incredible amount of traffic. And the Rice parking lot is they're always parking on the lawn up there because even the, the uh, parking lot can't hold all the cars. And it's a huge parking lot. My two cents. Hmm. I would just also, I would just want to point out, not, I don't disagree, um, but I do want to point out that, um, I, I need, and I don't disagree that more than one access point is, is a good idea. But if you connect to Joy Drive, then you're sending all that, a lot of that traffic through the Farrell um, Street neighborhood, which is also a residential neighborhood. So yeah, it's not something that's an easily, like it's not, it, you can't connect directly to Shelburne Road or something like that. You do, you could, you could distribute traffic better, absolutely, um, but it's not something in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, one other possibility would be to open the one way to two way and extend Hadley all the way up to uh, Rice, which was the original intention that the roadway is even built through the woods, uh, you know, long overgrown, but uh, the, uh, you know, the roadway was built to it for Hadley to, to go up to, uh, to Rice High School, but I don't see that happening at any time soon, but that's another possibility. Buses. So Paul, would you want to include, if I, if I had the, if the commission wants to add the action about working with the South Burlington School District to encourage use of school buses, walking and biking to school, would you like me to include South Burlington School District and private schools? Yes, please. Yeah. And same with the safety issues, too. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, were you were making a motion to move in some direction? No, I want. You were just people. pointing out that it's a nine. Uh, um, Lori, what, Lori wants to make a motion to adjourn. No, no I don't. Okay. No. <laughs> um, Michael, I have two things. Oh. Yes. Okay. I do have something under the recreation section, page fifty-four, um, where we do we say that. Uh, the last sentence in the first paragraph is the city must maintain and invest in the current system of parks recreation facilities and open spaces to keep them to keep those assets vibrant i'd like to add that the future master plan uh, master parks plan rather mm -hmm. must clearly map and delineate which city owned lands shall be designated as natural passive recreation areas and which shall be designated to allow conservation or development for active recreation. Would you read that one again? The future master parks, uh, parks master plan. I got it backwards. That's dyslexia for you or dyslexia. The future parks master plan must clearly map and delineate which city owned lands shall be designated as natural passive recreation areas and which shall be designated to allow conservation or the development of active uh, or for the development of active recreation. Michael, does the first action bullet point cover that? Because I did add, there was some language there about the function, the prepare a parks master plan, establishing the need and location of new parks function of existing and planned parks and identified amenities to serve the city's current and future population. So that function of existing and planned parks is what you're going after. I think it's cleanest to sort of add that, I'm add something to, in there. 
trying to distinguish between parks that are for natural that are natural areas for passive recreation and parks that we want to develop for active recreation where we want to have football fields or basketball courts or whatever okay and it was in the discussion which part what's how does the paragraph start that you want to the add the paragraph to? starts with south burlington must balance the need it's the second paragraph in the recreation section it's above goals and actions. It's just on top it's of page. Oh, way up top. Yeah. Oh, it's that's why I was in so that whole confused. that whole section. It's the second paragraph. Oh, um, I feel like that should go down. It's just further. an addition to the end of that par that second paragraph. Because the mm -hmm. the parks master plan or master parks plan doesn't exist yet, and so I think we need to be sure that certain things get into it or at least they're they're uh um they're they're they mentioned here yeah it just seems like they would go down further more in the recreation spaces part um... like at the end of um a range of park sizes and functions creates a functioning park system like at, in that paragraph Oh, uh, wait a minute. Could it go in the first bullet point if the first bullet point, um, what I hear Michael really wanting to add to this is to intentionally be clear about which lands are going to be used for, for active recreation and which lands are not going to be used so that we don't get in a situation where all of a sudden, uh, the remote areas of Red Rocks Park gets turned into a football field. Sure. Um, I'm wondering if something right, like... Um, yeah, and, and, you know, we had this un really unpleasant controversy about Hubbard. And I think if we clearly, clearly defined where we can do what, we, we wouldn't have this, such a divisive um, yeah. occurrence. It was really... It's the worst thing I've ever experienced in South Burlington. No, and, and I agree. I I guess it just felt like it should go. Where does it go? Yeah. Put it somewhere else. On... I just wanted to put it more with the discussion of the recreation spaces um, somewhere. Oh, okay. So, like, there's a paragraph that starts a range of park sizes and functions creates a functioning park system, you know, so it makes sense to then maybe in at the, somewhere in that paragraph, talk yeah, about. I, I do mention yeah. at the end of that paragraph, there's mention of uh, a park's master plan. So that would be a good place to add. Yeah, so uh, maybe. Park's master plan must clearly map and delineate which city owned lands shall be designated as natural passive recreation areas and which shall be designated to allow conservation or development for active rec recreation. Okay, I'll second that. I would just leave out the word development. Because <laughs> well, it seems like the word development kind I of got blown completely <laughs> out of proportion when it came to Hubbard no, Park. Could you say so for active Please recreation. do not use the word development no, but I when you're talking about parks. Donna, I had to use it in this case because I hate the word as much as you Well, don't just leave it out. Parks and not develop. Well, you you talked about it that no, way because it was because <laughs> okay. um, there's I'm, passive recreation and then there's active recreation, and it's, I'd leave it at that. And so you would yeah. read as shall be designated to, act, to allow conservation or active. Recreation. Well, even yeah. conservation is not really clear what you're talking about there. Well, you know, they might want to conserve a piece of land that they own. But it it that you that's say passive it. recreation. Okay, well, I'm passive recreation. I'm accepting the friendly amendment to remove the word developed. Can I yeah. re read back what I have? And I'm not sure it's 100 percent what you have, but I'm wondering if it works. Um, the parks master plan must clearly delineate which city-owned lands are designated for natural areas and passive recreation, and which are does Mm. which are designated for active recreation and managed park spaces yes yes okay, okay. great okay any uh, additional shall be. just shall be you want shall. Said will be i said she said will be are 
must clearly delineate which city owned lands are designated, designated. for natural things and yeah. I think I think the saying the parks master plan must clearly delineate is sufficient like for that. identification and mapping. Okay. Can you back to me? The parks master plan must clearly delineate which city owned lands are designated for natural areas and passive recreation and which are designated for active recreation and managed park spaces. I'll accept that as my motion. Okay, I'll. Uh, I appreciate. I'll it. second. Again. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Um. Can I go back to energy? Yeah. Um. Under energy, um, we have. The first energy goal is weatherize 600 existing homes through 2030. And I would like to see something added to that that talks about um, ensuring equity and transition from, um, is this not, not the, uh, I want something added that talks about equity and the transition from non-fossil fuel to non-fossil fuel heating and cooling to make sure that it is not something that's just able to be done by people who have the money to do it, but that it's something that is accessible to all our residents and that we have to figure out how to do that. I'm just staring at it because I feel like something like that is in here somewhere. I was looking for it. I thought we had talked about it before, but I didn't. See. Okay. <laughs> and that we have equity in the transition from fossil fuel to non-fossil fuel heating and cooling. Okay. Okay, um, I'll second that. Any discussion? Kelsey, no, I don't have it. I'm just, I'm wondering if that is only about home weatherization or if it is in all, like as a separate goal as for all of these things in in of all the things relating to energy yeah it, the, yeah it relates to cars yeah. and it's across the board right that's that the I mean. energy trans transition is equitable throughout our throughout our community yep and financially accessible and i don't know if this wants to be part of the same motion, but there's another thing I'd like to see added possibly. Go ahead and say it. Maybe. I would like to see um, a goal of, um, or maybe this is maybe this is an action item, um, but I would like to see focus on uh, development and installation of microgrids for all new developments and in existing uh, developments where, where feasible. Microgrids support dramatically the um, uh, peak demand issues. They make it so that neighborhoods are resilient when there's outages. Um, they cut down energy costs, et cetera. And, and I know Green Mountain Power has been doing some of them, but I think it should be a, an action item somewhere. So I guess. Um, I would say that most of, most of these goals from in this section come from the climate action plan that went mm -hmm. through its own adoption process yeah. and public outreach and the whole thing. Um, they've all also been discussed extensively by this body. I'm not sure if augmenting it, if adding that at this point is, it can always be jettisoned by the council. Yeah. I guess I'm wondering if it has been proper yeah. If it's been vetted enough by like when when the rest of this has been gone has gone through a lot of review by a lot of people. Um I'm happy to put uh, something more like explore option, you know, something that's I don't know. That's just my that's just me. Okay. But that's like to up see, to the commission. I don't know how we want to do it, but I, I think that somehow microgrids should be included in our 
actions to try and reduce our energy uh, consumption on our shift to to electric. What are you uh, to so, the climate action task? What's that? I said, what are you on the climate action task? Well, I think we added it in the text we, already. Um, it's in text already? We added it in the text on okay. page 30. I, in, if it's there well, already. Earlier in July, we did add that. Okay. I brought it up in July and I. Yeah. So it's in the paragraph. It's already there. It's in the paragraph starting increasing solar energy generation. And then it was added as a phrase. Um, to the next sentence, encouraging both local power generation for the regional grid and the use of local microgrids. Great. Okay. Thank you. I I guess that's what I was. That's what I'm comfortable adding. It was. It was adding. It was going to the next level of like requirements and everything that I didn't feel was fully vetted. But this, if you're happy with this, I'm happy with. This. I'm just being redundant. I'm sorry. Wait, I, did, I know I talked about it before, but I couldn't find Kelsey, it. Kelsey, did you get the equity and energy transition one? Yep. So I wrote that as I got to go back up a couple pages. Oh wait. Um, ensure the energy transition takes place equitably and is financially accessible to all members of our community. Okay, I second that. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we got Paul unanimous. Okay, so we are nearing when would be comfortable to wrap up. I have two moments. quick items. Okay. Can can I future land. Uh, I haven't had a chance to see it. Um, there was one suggestion that was made at one, at one of the listening sessions, and I thought it was a very one, good one, dealing with um, helping avoid heat islands when uh, creating higher density, um, you know, multi-use zones. And I think it would be very useful to add language about that, you know, explore uh, you know, basically encourage options to re to reduce heat islands uh in higher density developments okay. are you comfortable with kelsey just drafting something yes. okay yes i think they also talked uh, she also mentioned about um on on major arterials uh more more tree planting more shade so um, just arterials as well. just as a control f search street um, heat Island is mentioned in the context of street trees, and it is mentioned as one of the things to evaluate from an environmental justice perspective. Um, where, in addition to that, where would you like more language added? I think where we talk about um, higher density multi-use developments along uh, transit corridors, because those developments are what tend to create the the heat islands. Okay. Green space around them. Well, and a lot of it's parking too. You know, it's like the more parking, you know, you think <laughs> yep. even even look at city center with the new housing, you know, the parking that's in those. If those could be gardens instead of parks, that would be a much more pleasant, mm -hmm. cooler environment. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? We can just yep. head nodding. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Anything else? Michael, you had something? Yeah. I'd Two things. One on on the energy facility site section, page thirty two and thirty three. Uh, we have uh, local known constraints and local possible constraints, and the possible constraints are habitat blocks, or habitat blocks um, steep slopes, five hundred year floodplain, and S SEQ natural NRP areas. Um, I'd like to first of all make those also into known, because we do know about them. They're known constraints. So I'd like to move them up there and maybe shorten them a little bit like language similar, something like habitat blocks and habitat block and corridor overlay district, avoid encroachment and leave it at that. Steep slopes, 15 to 25% avoid encroach encroachment or mitigate. What page are you on, Michael? Page 33. Top of 33. Yeah. Um, 500 year floodplain, no encroachment. I don't think we should build anything in a 500 or 100 year floodplain. Um, so it's a section called energy facility siting. Yep. And Anyone? it's over, it spreads over two pages, and I'm on the second page. Yep. What page was it? Page 33 of 33. the package, I mean, of the document. 
So um, just a little bit of background on this section. A lot of this text was added um, in response to feedback from the CCRPC um, so that this plan can be adopted as an enhanced energy plan that gives the city um, deference in great in citing processes at the um, Public Utility Commission. Um, the difference between a known constraint and a possible constraint is a little counterintuitive. It is not the known, like we know where it is. It is the, whether it is something that is can be mitigated. And we have to, as a city, regulate um, renewable energy siting in the same way we regulate other development. So if it's we had to put habitat block, co corridor overlay, steep slopes of 15 to 25, the 500 year floodplain, all in the local possible constraints because our um, local regulations have mitigation options in particular circumstances. Um, so all of those things in our LDRs, um, which is what those explanations are about the 70% of the parcel is covered by habitat block and the, all those things. That, that I know is in there. Yeah, so that that is written in a way that is required by the CCRPC and the state um, to meet the requirements of Act 174. Is, it's a possible constraint, but not, not a real constraint. Does it mean that uh, energy um, facility siting could happen in these areas? If the same mitigation requirements are met that are applied to any other kind of development. Well, like a 500-year floodplain. I mean, yes, we... We we were wishy washy about it because we do say we can build something if it's flood proof, right? Which I which is what we have to put in the um, in this plan to make the it LDRs. Yeah, and it was a mistake in my view. So I was that is a discussion for another day. To correct it. Okay. <laughs> the last I wrote down two inputs related to the future lands, but one was from. Commissioner Smith, who asked that the yellow part of the area. Michael, I think your microphone is either off or you're not close enough. Switch it off again. Uh, two requests about the future land use map. One from uh, Laurie Smith, who requested that the yellow part of the area along the lake shore, south of Queen City Park, that the, that whole thing be changed to green rather than partly green and partly yellow, because it's, I mean, that would be that would be a major aspiration for the city to have that whole section available um, for parkland if possible. And the colors don't really, aren't related to zoning or parcelization. So I support Mr. Smith's request and I think we should change that. And the second one, came from Ryan Doyle, who wanted who suggested that the yellow strip on the north end of Spear Street around um, East Terrace and Spear Street be changed from yellow to red because it's already a, a higher density area. Nick's putting it up on the screen for anyone um, in the room or online. Uh, so where would the red go? Then we'll changed go it already. Soon. No, up top. Uh, just where that jug handle is, that's the, the, the yellow strip at the top end of Spear. No, this side. Where it says Burlington. Yeah, oh, all the way up. Where it says uh, that one, yeah, that one. I think that was Mr. It's Doyle that. Su suggested that. And I oh, think yeah, I remember that. I feel like we actually said we wanted to do that. Oh, no, we just listened to you say it. And in my head, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> But I think it should. Yeah, I don't uh, think any I decision think, was actually yeah. formally made. Um, it's right here, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you get that? Or um, the other one is making a motion. Should it, we just do yes. it separate? Um, make a motion to change that. So, Michael, is it just the circle in the current jug handle, or is it up to the little point? No, it's corner? the yellow strip on the border of the city. That one, yeah. Turn the whole yellow strip to. I don't think that's what was discussed um, because the length of Spear Street and East Terrace is currently um, our four single family homes. Um, whether they're used for that is not always the case. But, it's very but I think dense. if I'm, my, my memory is, is that it was more about the interface going up into UVM and around the 
you know, future reconfiguration of the jug handle at the top of Spear Street at Williston Road. Is that? That's already, but the, the along, yeah. along yeah. Um, Spear Street, the, yeah, they're single family homes, but there's about 12 inches between them. I mean, they're really. Not on East Terrace, they're not. No, no, on Spear Street, Spear Street they are. I I think that's a much bigger conversation than changing the map at this point. And I don't think the commission ever had that conversation. I think it was the corner. If, right, you could take like just right? the upper corner. I suggest to the score um, all of the land facing Williston Road and then along Spear Street on the non residential side because there's high intensity university usage, parking activities. Um, I can't hear any of this. Uh, so my comment uh, last month was about all of the lands along Williston Road and on the UVM side of Spear Street, which aren't currently residential, but do have a lot of um, either abutting major roadways or have a lot of institutional high usage, you know, like that parking garage there because that's kind of intense. And there's also a lot of room for infill there in a valuable area near a lot of residents. Okay. That, that's what I was referring to, that okay. particular comment. And the other one was down south, south of um, Red Rocks. Okay, let's look to them separate. So how about, I'll uh, second that first thing turning it red on the Williston Road. Williston Road and on the university side of Spear. On Williston Road, I think it's already red. Not the whole way. Not the whole way. Yeah. Up into the up into the little triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, any discussion about that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Michael, your next thing. Aye. Next. The next one was um the property, all that property on the lake, on the lake side, on the lake shore from Queen City Park or Red Rocks Park, all the way down should be this green. Mm -hmm. There's some residential development at the at the bottom end. Of, I mean, yes, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, hope aspire for it to be um, public. Access to the lock. Right lake. now, it's an exceptional wildlife corridor, and it that's is the true. only section of waterfront left uh, in the I'll, city that is undeveloped and not owned by the city. That's well, I'll, I'll just say motion. that yellow does not preclude public park ownership. Um, it doesn't have to be a green spot to be a public park um, or to be indicated on the official map as a potential future park, which most of that is. Um, just, just to, as a point of clarification about the land use types, that yellow doesn't necessarily mean not a park, and green doesn't necessarily mean park. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it, it's just what we aspire to. It indicates that that's what we what we would like. So that's my motion. You want the whole thing? So between it'd be like lake green, and then over to the red at the railroad. I was hoping to see it expanded. If it was the whole thing, I'd be thrilled. But I'm. It doesn't matter, um, Jessica. You know, it doesn't preclude the things that you're talking about. If we just change the whole thing to green, we, you know, there's zoning there as well. So my understanding of why that is yellow is that there was a decision, and I was not here as part of this, but there was a decision made during the IZ discussion about the use of that property, and that it was not required to be um a conservation pud and so there is development potential on the east part of the property that's not in the official map park necessarily that's i'm just explaining the my understanding of the discussion that happened during the iz process um but that's that's all i have to add about that and then it is a decision um for you all to make is is the transition from the reddish brown to the yellow and or green is that the railroad track the railroad line. Yeah. that's the railroad track hmm. and right now on the other side of that rail railroad line that whole section is a natural area there's one house on the lake 
yeah. right here and other than that, the whole place is natural. And the city, historically, some the city has yeah. some expressed of it, yeah, some an interest in this land, yeah. but nobody took took action. Um, it's as as um, Laurie pointed out. It's also a major wildlife corridor. Um, apart from the beach at Red Rocks, that's the only lakeside we have in South Burlington. Well, the lakeside's green, green. right? Um, Except where there's houses already, like a well, there's a little neighborhood there. Yeah, there's bits of it that are green. The whole the whole shoreline of the feral property is green in that map. The only parts that are yellow are existing neighborhoods, on the lake. On the lake, yes. This this yellow is yeah. The existing that's it is not. Um, guess I'm not sure. Make the green bigger. If we're ending at 9 30, yeah. there are other things I'd rather focus on than this one, even though it was my suggestion. <laughs> okay, well, I don't hear a second. We've got a motion, I think, in a second. Right? We didn't have a second. There was no second yet. I'll second it then. Okay, additional discussion? Other than I think it's a good idea. Well, I, yeah, I'm. I don't know that I'm prepared to just say all that yellow is going to go to green. I, I'd want to think more about that and look back at our previous discussion. You want to come? We can. You want to defer? One vote. To defer a vote on this and I'll withdraw the motion until we have, can have a more substantive discussion. Or what were your concerns? I I just want to look close. I would want to look closer at that. Property. I mean, we do have green on the waterfront, which is what I was most concerned about, and the habitat block um, is green. So those were like my big things about that, and they are already green. Um, like I don't know that I felt strongly that there couldn't be any development on that whole. It's a pretty big area, um, and it's pretty close to like a lot of services. So I don't like I don't like personally feel like we want to have nothing there so i i don't know i, I just feel like i'm not really pr personally prepared but i'm only one of us so no there's a wastewater treatment plant down there somewhere and i'm not even sure where on that map it that's, is that's quite further down that's down i think it's in the red it's it's in the red and it's down two streets down it's yeah. where it's where uh, um the road that has the uh UVM Hort Farm on it. Bartlett Bay. Bartlett. Down there, Bartlett Bay. It's this road down here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Michael withdrew, I thought. Oh, Michael might have withdrawn. Did you withdraw it, Michael? I, I temporarily withdrew it until. Uh, Michael, turn your mic on. Oh, you need your mic on. Well, you don't well, need to put it on hold until Jessica has. Satisfied herself that it can be done or can't be done. Oh, I am looking at a I'm looking at a parcel me. map here, and there's development. There's no development on west of the railway line. It's completely natural. That's right. So I don't know why you're worried about it. <laughs> it's mode. It's not. <laughs> mode. It's it's. <laughs> some of it is mowed. I don't it's, know. Some of it's mowed. It's not like it's old growth road. forest. Yeah, I mean, Holmes Road goes down to the lake. I know what's there. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying we've had a whole lot of discussion about like the need for housing and all these other things, and I guess I'm not convinced I want to change it. So, that, but I'm only one of us. We can vote. I mean, it's 106. I'm not going to vote for it, but right now. Um, we can take a vote. Fine. Is that all the discussion? No, oh, I just say with all the housing pressures, I, I'd be very reluctant to take a pretty housing is for a, a big section that's adjacent to pretty high density development. Um, you know, I think the 
Where, where's the high density development? So all the red. Are we talking about this here? The red. No, we're talking about this land here. I'm looking at that. Well, I'm looking at the yellow. <laughs> I'm looking okay. at the yellow oh, that's adjacent I, to the red. I do. It is after nine thirty. I do. I would love to. Yeah, wrap there's up. high density development west of uh, east of the railway line. Right, and and I'm I'm just of the belief that a high quality development is not a bad thing. And I think there's, and I think I think this whole discussion has kind of happened a lot too, you know, in in terms of, um, you know, people kind of making the assumption that all development is horrible and it's bad and it should be avoided. Let's, and I, well, we can. I, I mean, think, we can. I don't think we should assume that. I don't want to be talking that much. That's not why I'm asking. Okay. This. Well, we can. No, no, we can just vote. So just because for as long for decades before I ever came. Michael, is your mic on? For decades before I ever came here, the city has been interested in having this available for the public, public access to the to the lake, not to develop luxury homes. Yeah, um, I would just note that the official map reflects a public, a, a possible future public park yes. along the lakeshore. It does not show a, map, a park all the way to the railroad. Yes. That's just a factual statement, and that is the delineation. My understanding that is the delineation of the green to the yellow is the official map park and not. But happy to move on to Lori said he had some more things, but that's up to you all. Okay, all in favor? That was one. Okay, all <laughs> opposed or keeping it the same? Aye. I can't. Uh, what is the vote? I can't really say. I'm saying neutral on it. It's to change. It's to change it all to no, green. No, I understand. I understand it. Yeah, but <laughs> who's voting for what? Michael's voting to turn it all green. Okay, I'll vote with Michael. Okay. Since um, I said. It. So we just have a draw. There's no. So it doesn't move forward. No. Um. Lori abstained. I abstained. So it was. I, it was three to two. Right. It's three to two. Yeah, so so it means there's no. Down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just unresolved, yeah. we can call it. Yeah. <laughs> so can I, I think we've gotten lost in the weeds of uh, <laughs> yes. today, right? Do you so, have any change you have any changes, Paul? We're trying to wrap up. Nope, none for me. Okay, sounds like Laurie has a few and then maybe we're done. That'd be wonderful. Under environment. Um I, have, I don't know how we have the question about about known and possible. Michael, will you please stop turning your microphone off? Yeah, I, I, I'm being polite. <laughs> I didn't know how we resolved the question about known and possible constraints when it came to. Um, that the difference between known and possible is the state Act 174 definitions of those two words. It's not. Um, sort of the general parlance of possible constraints. Um, it's if something in our LDRs allows it to be mitigated, if, if it allows other kinds of development to be mitigated in a certain way, we have to allow the same for renewable energy um, development, which is why things are in the possible constraints that have some mitigation options um, in our LDRs. Thank you. I can't change it. Okay. And so under environment, I think it would be really, helpful from one of the comments I heard, if we could add something about um, education around health and pesticides. We're not able to actually uh, ban pesticides at our level, but we could talk about education to educate our community about the impacts of pesticides on our environment and our health. Herbicides and that What's that? Include herbicides. herbicides and pesticides, yes, sir. Okay. And the other thing that I wanted to see added around environment, um, which was brought up in the listening sessions and is something I'm quite aware of, is the issue around noise. And we don't currently talk about noise as being an environmental issue, which it very we much do. Is. We do. We have an action called consider that says consider noise pollution reduction, including possible options like a noise ordinance. Beautiful. I must have brought that one up already. So you probably did that already. Yep. Just the, the pesticides and herbicides. Yep. So I included a bullet saying, uh, educate the community about the impacts of <laughs> the use of pesticides and herbicides. 
Okay. okay. Um, oh, the, I, one, the one very quick, tiny, factual thing that I just want to point out about pesticides and herbicides is there is some... There's, there's community concern about the emerald ash borer. The treatment of trees for emerald ash borer is a pesticide. Yes. So it's it's there are some gray areas in the use of pesticides and herbicides. Which is a um, very targeted use. Correct. It's systemic. What if you use the word uh, spray? Well, this is just talking about education. This is just about education, about the impacts. Yeah. So I'm not talking about yeah, how you we don't have any power to yeah. restrict, but we can educate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the last thing I have is relating to the land use plan. And Paul put up, which I think is down again, a uh, developed and undeveloped map for our lands. I think it's still there. But... I looked for it today and I couldn't. Okay. Anyway, um, we had talked about in this city plan, we talk about developed lands that are appropriate to be left undeveloped. And undeveloped lands that are appropriate for development. And we talked about delineating those on the map. And I think it's really important for us to be able to see that and clearly mark what we're saying on these undeveloped lands. We think these spaces are suitable for development and vice versa on what we call the developed land. These spaces we see are suitable to be left undeveloped. For instance, the acreage that's in front of the Lowe's and old Hannaford building could be turned into a pocket park. I think it's really important for us to, on a map, have those things delineated so someone can't just go, oh, this is appropriate for development. Let's develop it. So there's a couple of things. One is um, we have, it's not something you could just, just do with data. It would be a sort of parcel by parcel decision making system by this body, um, which is kind of not, it's a little bit different than the level of this plan. But the second thing is part of what you're talking about is the parks master plan, because the parks master plan may end up identifying parcels that should be indicated as proposed future parks for the official map. Um, so there's some other processes that are involved um, in there. And I just um, happy to happy to ha provide and re, re upload if it's not there right now, the built unbuilt. Um, but identifying specific parcels for parks or not parks or whatever isn't is part of this future planning of the parks master plan and open space plans and housing needs assessments and all these other things we're planning to do for the parks i understand that particularly for what we call undeveloped lands now in the plan we say portions of the undeveloped lands are suitable for development mm -hmm. and so I guess can be identified. So I guess I would say they are identified by the future land use types. Yeah. The future if it's an unbuilt map. parcel that's in the yellow, orange, red, the assumption is that it would be something suitable for some version of use where the green would not. Okay. So I guess it's the inner it's a, it's looking at the interface between the built unbuilt layer and where those things meet up with the land use types, because otherwise the specific parcel by parcel stuff is a little bit different. I will look at it again and see if that yeah. satisfies me. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Are we was do we have to do something with the report? No, the the report was included um, with the intention that. We would hopefully get to this point where there's enough direction to staff that I can make these changes and that you would be in a position to move this to public hearing on the 22nd um, and that you have this report with more lead time because we were able to get it done um, instead of only having three or four days to look at it. So it's not something we need to do any action on today. Um, so, there would be good. It would be good to have action on the two sets of minutes. But other than that. The one, I guess the one other thing, like there was public comment that had like um, wording changes and typos and maybe a reference to like the historic society, like mm -hmm. things that are more like technical yep. format kind of stuff. Are we okay with them doing those if it's like a formatting or word wrong or? Yep. Typos like and things. We also, as I mentioned, we'll have, we have Andy, our new communications director, um, going through and doing sort of a full copy edit with a brand new set of eyes instead of me who stared at the document for months. Um, so I'm happy to do, to integrate um, sort of bit by bit edits of that sort of level of sort of grammar typos, um, 
misused words, overused words, you know, switching phrases in a sentence. I'm happy to do all of that if, if you're comfortable with me doing it. Yeah. And let's, uh, minutes, I don't remember the date. Um, if we could get a motion about the minutes. Looks like Fran's going to pull It was uh, June 27 and July 11. Do we do them separately? Together. Together. Sorry. Second. Move to improve the minutes of July 27th and June 11th. My second. Opposite. Other way around. June 11th. <laughs> okay. For bed. Um, any discussion on the minutes? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful job, everyone. We are adjourned since we struck the other stuff from the meeting. Great job. Thanks. And we don't need next Tuesday. Adjourned. Yeah. Thank no you. meeting next Tuesday. Hooray. Wait, what, what? Thank you, Paul. We have some fun. Why don't we meet every week? Thank you, Jessica. Hey, Paul, that was me, Kelsey. <laughs> oh, Kelsey. <laughs>